Hello, welcome to This Cycling Life Leadership Bites. I am Bernard Moorman, and today I'm joined by Jamie Anderson and Alan Davies, both Aussies. Uh, Jamie is a professor, keynote speaker, author, but above all, a cyclist, even European uh, TT champion with the Masters, won a big virtual race, had some other great victories, and talking about victories, then we don't need to introduce Alan Davis as he is a former cyclist with tremendous finishes and wins. And uh, today I really have a question for both of them. Like, how did you get to know each other? And now Jamie is the rider and Alan is the coach. How is it working? How are training weeks? How is preparation for races? Just, just give me, fill me in there, please. Thank you. Yeah, great, Bernard. Thanks a lot. Um, I actually reached out to, to Alan in 2016. Um, I was going up an age group classification. Uh, I was just about to turn uh, 45. Uh, and I had a big dream. And that dream was to go on and, and really spend a life living like a pro for a year, racing world level events, uh, UCI World Series Grand Fondos, UCI World Series races, that kind of stuff. So I reached out to Alan. And for me, I guess the most important thing, first thing, Bernard, was we had a great chemistry together. And when I felt that chemistry, I thought, you know, this, this could work. Yeah. Okay, Alan, what's, what, how did you feel the introduction with, with Jamie? Yeah, first of all, thank you. Bernard for the introduction and it's great to be here again on TCL. Um, yeah, back like Jamie said, back in 2016, we reached out and got, got in contact with each other and uh, basically I was just basically still in my transition phase, so to speak, after my career. So I went, I recently went into coaching and, um, and started my own business. So uh, yeah, the timing was good, and like like what Jamie said, the chemistry was was great between us straight away. Um, you know, both being Australians, living in Europe, I, I suppose was a big part of it as well. And um, then then the the journey started as a, me as a as a cycling coach and mentor, and 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 to be honest, uh, Jamie being my life mentor. Okay. Um... What surprises me kind of is you were, like you said, Alan, you were in your transition from ex-cyclist towards coaching mentorship. So then all of a sudden, an ex-professor called you to coach him. What, what was the main point of attraction that you got there to say like, oh, I want to work with this person? Yeah, I think those, those two ingredients were really attractive for me. You know, I, I really wanted to... Uh, you know, I'd done this this bike game thing since I was ten, so until I was thirty three or thirty four. So that was my life, and that were, that were my my horizon, so to speak, was quite limited. I was kind of going through life with blinkers on, with the cycling blinkers on, and, and it gave me everything. But um, I was fully aware of life, and the, the horizons were a lot broader than the ones I had. So, and and who not better to a guy you know who like I said, an Australian in, in Europe who went to a crossroads in his life and uh, and took the, the academic side and, and basically I took the other side in the cross, crossroads. And um, so we both, we would coach each other. Like I uh, basically, like I said, the, the synergy was there straight away. I knew I could give Jamie advice and obviously cycling coaching to improve his cycling and vice versa. I knew, uh, you know, for me, that was exactly what I needed in my life at the time and still today. Um, Jamie's, you know, guiding me through through life and giving me new ideas, and it's and it's fresh and healthy. Yeah, yeah, it was a good. Uh, I mean, amazing when we. I mean, reflect back when we when we first met and we started to connect with each other. Of course, because my journey had come full circle. You know, Alan, as he said, he'd been through a what seventeen year professional you know cycling career, been racing his bike pretty much with every piece of energy he had since he was about ten years old. You know, for me, um, I'd raced into my late teens, but then because of my family situation and you know just the way that that life had gone for me, I, I didn't get that opportunity to, to to chase that dream that I had to turn professional. So. You know, also when I came to Alan, you know, I didn't just come to him with a story about winning bike races. I came to him and explained to him actually how important this journey was for me and and this dream that I had to really see what my potential was as an athlete. Um, because for me, it was kind of like unfinished business. And immediately I sensed that, you know, Alan, he, he really, I, I think, 
empathize with that story, um, having been through, you know, also tough times himself to, to make it as an athlete. So what I immediately sensed was that, you know, Alan wasn't just interested in developing me as an athlete and getting the best physical performance out of me that he could. Um, he also really appreciated why I was doing what I was doing. And I think he also, in a way, came with me on that journey, you know, not, not so much as a sort of, I don't know, as a coach, but almost as a, a fellow traveler. And that's been the journey we've had over the last four years. Mm -hmm. Can uh, Alan, can you explain that feeling a little more? Was that also because, uh, because of coaching a person like uh, Jamie with the personality like Jamie, it also made you understand that, like you said, the world is wider than just a cycling race. Is, is, is that part of your journey that you're going through and you guys both connect so well now? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Bernard, it was, um, like Jamie said, we basically started the journey together. Um, and keeping in mind, you know, I, I had a lot of coaching over my lifetime from various coaches um, from a very young age. So I had a, a lot of experience on, on, you know, how coaches work and how the delivery of um you know, advice and also, you know, coaching, just general coaching was, was handled. And uh, it was kind of, um, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a joint. I, I can't, it, we were, didn't really talk about it, it just kind of happened. You know, we basically just two mates ended up yeah. uh, hooking up together, going along this journey, going along this pathway, you know, I'm forever giving Jamie advice with, with whatever in terms of cycling and coaching, but vice versa. Now, uh, Jamie's, you know, also helping me with my coaching now with my cycling coaching mm -hmm. in, in a broader range from, from not only just coaching, uh, cycling coaching, but just life coaching. Can we, can we bring it together that you started with, with coaching skills where it went way further than just coaching skills? Because as yeah. far as I yeah. can see in, in the sport of cycling, most of the coaching is coaching skills how to train, how to sit aerodynamic, how, mm. how to eat. But I mean, there is also the, the person where you need to find the why. Why are you suffering? Why are you doing all that exercise? To Look, get Bernard, I think you know, I touched on that in terms of you know, me explaining to, to Alan about my comeback and why I was doing what I was doing. But more than that, um, look, Alan is absolutely world class in the way that you know he he uses all the tools, the training peaks, and he understands. You know, if we start talking, I'm not. We don't want to get into technical discussion here, but you know, cycling is a big part of my life. So we work on on like macro cycles, right? We're looking forward four years to the next World Masters Games, or um, you know, in that big context, because I'm going to be you know racing my bike probably until I'm in my grave. So we have those bigger goals, long-term goals. Then we break that down into what the goal for the next year. So maybe that's the next World Masters, you know, Grand Fondo Championship cycle, whatever that might be. Now we're racing on the track as well. We were in Manchester last year. We break that down. Then that comes down to the week-by-week -week stuff and the day-by-day -day stuff. So Alan is just amazing at the way that, you know, sometimes I feel like I've got levers sticking out of my body and, you know, Alan is 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 pulling those levers and pushing the buttons to get my body where it needs to be. But there's much more than that because actually I think the biggest thing that Alan has brought to me is, is a winner's mindset, right? Because that's something which he has had and he understands deeply. And I think many coaches don't understand. They can push the buttons and pull the levers. But Alan brings a philosophy to me of a winner. And I think that's what has really transformed me as a rider, actually. And I think as a person, because I've now, I really feel that I have that winner's mindset um, that I take into every race that we do together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it may sound strange, but I, I, I love the idea about the winner's mindset, but I think you both had it. But I think you guys working together, I can even see it now on the screen. I mean, the happiness, the joy of just the journey I think is more significant and can bring the winner's mentality that you had already, because you proved that in your career, to blossom again. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you guys are born with a, a winner's mentality, but then coming, creating an atmosphere for each other of enjoyment that can create happiness in the journey. I think this is even more important. And for both of you, I think it is 
for it's so normal in your life that you don't even see it anymore. And that's in a re, in a way why I st started with that question because I saw the, the the recordings of the race in Sardinia where Alan was as your coach, and then I saw the virtual race on Sunday where Alan again was as your coach and. I, what I sensed is that tremendous, in the stress moments even, that tremendous happiness of what you guys are meaning for each other. Can you, can, are, first of all, are you aware of that? Second, can you explain that a little bit, what it does with you guys? I, I, I'd like to go back a little bit further to your question before, um, Bernard, for sure. I went straight into it with my skills of being a cycling coach and my cycling background. But along this journey, and actually it's unfolding, um, definitely my talents are being found. And uh, I'm finding it, you know, as we go along. It's uh, there's some there that have been there for a little while. I just had to dig them up. But there's definitely some other ones that are getting developed and, and that's helping me through life. And I think that's kind of explains that question is, it's kind of happening happening naturally as we go along. You know, it's four years now we've been working together and we've been going down all different... We've gone down one main path, but off that path has been a couple of different avenues that we've explored and it's developed definitely my personal talents that I never thought I, I had or that were there somewhere. We just had to find them. So, And Jamie is the one who, who made me open my eyes to that in my life. Yeah, and yeah. and I've I've introduced that into my coaching now as well. Mm. So it's it's happening naturally for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's amazing for me, Bernard. I mean, what Alan talks about here, because I started to realize pretty early on when we started working together. Look, you know, Alan was developing my training plans and stuff. But what I started to sense, you know, he started just to give me this self belief, you know, because obviously, you know, I'm look look, I'm almost fifty now. When we started working together, I was forty five. I'm not the strongest guy on the road, you know, and I remember having a conversation with Alan because I went away and analyzed all of these competitors, the world level guys who I'm going to be racing against at the Grand Fondo World Championship level. And at a raw level, I'm analyzing these guys' numbers because I can find it on Strava. I can see their training sessions. I can see their watts per kilo. And I'm like, Alan, look, I'm never going to do that, man. You know, I just physiologically, that's, and Alan's like, just put that aside. He said, it's not the strongest guy who wins the bike race. It's, it's the guy who is the smartest, who is the most tactically astute, who uses their, Alan always talks about using your bickies, you know, using your energy at the right moments. And you know what? After hearing this from him and then getting into races with him beside me, because they, for example, you mentioned Giro Sardinia, a multi-day road race we've done. Alan is behind me on the motorbike with an earpiece and he's giving me that self-belief, you can do it. So... You know, that's something he brought to me and, and I started to really believe in myself. And then I started winning bike races and winning bike races against guys. So I think these guys are better than me. So what that then did, you know, of course, I was enjoying my racing up until that moment. But then having Alan there beside me, mm -hmm. it took the enjoyment to a whole new level, right? Because I also wanted to please him. You know, when I say, you know, I'm, I love racing. I love, you know, being on my bike. But I also love you know, making Alan proud, right? So, so that's also an aspect of the enjoyment, which I think a coach and a coachee maybe don't appreciate sometimes that there has to be joy in the relationship, you know? Um, so I hope that makes sense for you, Bernard, but for me, that, that enjoyment, it's, it's not just enjoyment for myself. It's also my enjoyment in seeing how happy Alan is when he can see me deliver results. Um, yeah. I hope that makes sense, Bernard. It makes total sense. I mean, for me, my life motto is inspire other people and make them happy because I learned that when you do that, they will make you happy or circumstances will make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. So well, but, I, but now the other quote you have, and I think this, it really articulates in a way the relationship I have with Alan and what he's taught me about winning and losing. So maybe you would share that. Can you share that, Bernardo, that little statement you have about winning and losing? And then we can talk about how that's very relevant for how Alan and I work together. The, the first one is, you know, it's not because you didn't win that you're lost a day or that your day is lost. Uh, but the other thing uh, is for me, there's four, four situations. You can win. I think everybody understands that. You cannot win. You can lose and you can fail. The person that does not win or the team that does not win means it was in a position where if just circumstances were a little different and a little, a few different small 
um, decisions were made, they could have won, but they learned a lot about what they can do better next time. Yeah. Losers are the ones that could have won, but start blaming all the outside circumstances, weather, technical stuff, other riders, whatever. And then the failures are those guys that try to coach the losers, but have not even done races like that. So to me, it's big. Let's face it. When you do a race, you start with about 200 or now 175, so to speak. There's only one winner. That doesn't mean there's 170 something losers. You know, you can learn a lot. And I think that's in life the same. You not everything you grab turns into gold, mm. you know? So, but if you start to work with that mentality saying like, well, at least I will make people happy then, you know, the day comes. If you see uh, Alan, how it is growing for you now, when I see wh how you bring your own uh, real willpower to Jamie to win, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah. And it should be for a lot that's, of people. That's a, that's a good comment. I mean, Alan, I mean, maybe, um, you know, because I experienced it at the other end, you know, like I mentioned Giro Sardinia when you were behind me and on the motorbike. Or last week on Sunday, I did the, the DJ 100, which is probably one of the most prestigious virtual races in Italy. And, you know, I got onto the podium with Alessandro Balan. I mean, that, that was just amazing, right? But I didn't do that alone. You know, in Sardinia, and we, maybe we can talk about what, what we did on Sunday. You know, on Sunday's virtual race, here I was on my indoor trainer in Belgium, <laughs> He was Alan oh, live streaming top, Alan? over Zoom Can you see that? as my director sportive, giving yeah, me all, live okay. into the, encouragement, the now, feedback, in terms of tactical exact... ideas. I mean, Alan, can you just yeah. talk us through what maybe about how, One how you going, knew what to yeah, say when during that race? Yeah. Of course, we had our plan, right. but there were periods when I was really struggling. I'm digging a bit deep. of a dig because I feel good, mate. What do you reckon? Maybe you yeah, can just mate. talk about how you do that as a coach because there's coaching that happens before a race. You know, we do lots Jared of that, you know, the, the training and peaks and the sessions. The decent, but that coaching you give me in real time, for me, that's the most valuable of all. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's using, uh, I suppose using those levers you spoke about before, Jay, um, pulling on, you know, all, all the experience in, in live racing and and uh, what I've had in my personal life. I mean, that's introducing that into my coaching and becoming a good sports director. You you have to be, you have to know what's going on, but the delivery and, and your personal manner is, is very important. We see a lot of... I'm a big believer in chemistry uh, within teams, within relationships, coaching relationships, the synergy. Um, and apart from all that, it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It makes me happy. Like seeing, seeing you um, win or, you know, or just giving you a bit of advice and to see it come off and work for your favor, for your benefit. Mm -hmm. it, it makes you feel happy. It makes, for me as a coach, it, it's not, you know, it's not about actually, so winning's great, but as Bernard said, you know, there's not every day as you win. Mm. And finding happiness is also broken down. You know, we went over that climb. You know, you you bridge the gap to that riders in front of you. We had that plan. You did it. That they're they're the little they're the little happy moments that you have as a coach. And uh, at the end of the day, if we win, that's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. But to see a progression made in, 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 in the plan that we had, we set out, you know, that's, that's the chemistry that, that makes you feel good and makes you feel happy. Um, now I've got lots of cl coaching clients from, you know, I've, I've, the goal is to be from D grade to C grade or from C grade to B grade. That's the goal. You know, it's not about winning uh, a certain event and, and to accomplish these goals. That's why, uh, that's why we do it because it makes you happy. Basically it makes me happy as a coach. And if I see my clients um, achieving their goals and obviously the happiness, that's raw. That's what it's all about. Yeah. But not only, not only that, uh, Alan, you, you, you want to see him get in there, but I can just feel that you are also there getting there. You know, you're there yeah. alongside the, or, or while the journey is going on. And that was so oh, great. Man. I think people should really. I was in Tuscany, Italy on Sunday. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was there, brother. I was there. Yeah, well, yeah. even before, I, was, I mean, my avatar should, was there. People should really watch it because there are moments that you can see the hell and the suffering that Jamie was going through 
we could see that through your eyes. You were like, oh man. And <laughs> that, that where it was, I re really felt that there was a unity, which is yeah. so great. And just yeah. think about it. Yeah, But it, that's that's important, Bernard. I mean, that's, that's you know, also what we can't underestimate here is that, you know, when, when you are suffering like that, you know, and again, it's a very different situation being alone on the road, right? Um, for me to have an Alan Davis literally in my ear or on a screen, it, 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 I'm not saying that the pain goes away or, or the intensity, but you know what you will actually see. And we'll sh I'll share some video clips here as we're talking. I'll try to bring some video, video clips from Sunday's race in, into this discussion. But at certain points, Alan cracks jokes and he says funny stuff, and he says it at the right time. Maybe he can see that I'm suffering a little bit, and that you know we're, we're getting towards the top of that climb, and so he, he actually breaks my 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 that 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 pain through some humor or bringing in a, a funny funny little, little joke or anecdote but the other thing is that alan davis he knows my body better than i do in many ways right so he also knows he was watching that race so in the virtual race you can see you know how far behind you are the competitors you know what what are the watts per kilogram and so on and at a certain point alan davis says to me jamie you know balan is in what did you say he's in the hurt locker he's, yeah. he's you know and, and, I, and, and he said this to me and it's like, whoa, you know, I, I, that, that, you know, he said that at the right moment because it was maybe a kilometre and a half before the top of the main climb of the race. They've got Alessandro Balan, mate, and he is in the herd box. I can tell you right now he's on the live screen, live, live stream on the web, on the website. So, uh, yeah, they're in the herd box. The other guys in that front group, mate. So keep it going the perfect time and that only comes because alan has 17 years more as a professional so he can see that scenario in a way that i don't think 95 percent of coaches would be able to read so that was a very special experience for me on sunday you're within the last day now yeah all right i'm gonna do a bit of a dig because i feel good mate what do you reckon yeah mate let's see what happens Go over the top of the climb and then see what happens on the descent. You and, and there it's where communication you guys both have through the radios is going way further. It was real connection because uh, Alan could kind of see your body language and he could observe that he saw the right things. So it, it is much more than just communicate with each other. You guys were really connected. And that's the strength of it that is not seen by, by all the coaches, you know, and, and also even leaders. Yeah. I mean, you can have a good communication, but as long as there is no real connection, you cannot go to the, the, the parts where you go because to get the result, let's face it, you got to go through a pain zone. I mean, winning never comes without pain, but enduring pain is kind of easier if you can share it, if it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah, absolutely, you absolutely. And now, Alan, maybe you could. I mean, it's good to hear from you on this as well because I, I guess that's also what I what struck me early on in our relationship. That you know, we we speak a few times a week often, um, and the the number of times that you don't actually ask me about the bike, you ask me about other stuff in my life. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that and 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 why you do that? I mean, I think I understand why you do it now, but early on, that was a little bit of a surprise to me how much you were asking me about other aspects of my life besides the bike. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to you have to really get to know the individual, you know. Um, I, I suppose I'm talking it as a third person here, but getting to know the individual and uh, you know how, how they tick. Um, going back to the race Sunday, you know, obviously I, I know you well, Jay. You know yourself well. You know how, how I work well. Um, during, you'll see in the, if you watch the episode, you'll see, I was aware that you had the information in front of you that you were watching and I was watching it as well through the Zoom, but it clicked that I can also watch the live feed from the race that they put on. Mm. And that wasn't planned. It's was just sort of, I was aware of that. I thought, wow, I can actually watch that as well and give you information from what I'm seeing on there as a coach and as a director. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I could see Alessandra Balan. You know, they're going live feeds to, to all these other individuals, your competitors. And just being aware, you know, of these little things where, you know, I know you're got, you're on fourteen percent of the last climb of the Miller World Circuit, and I know what it's like to be in that position, and to turn that into a positive, and go, okay, 
we can actually make a we can split this but there's a group of five at the time we could we can that we could uh, reduce that to two or three riders going over the top of that climb and 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 that's when it sort of everything sort of just unfolded in front of or my eyes and and also you're the one on the on the yeah. home training doing yeah. doing the pedaling but uh yeah. i think that's a bit of an example of getting to know the individual um the message that needs to be said at the right time and how to yeah. deliver the message a joke every now and again is great yes yeah. you, you know you jay you preach a lot about humor in in leadership you know not 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 just in the sporting world but in the you know the in in life in general on what it does so uh, yeah. i think but it uh, breaks it all down yeah and i think that's you know we, we go back to and i go back to that winner's mindset that 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 I think, Alan, is again one of your talents is developing that winner's mindset. You know, we talked about self belief. We talked about, you know, we enjoy, we really enjoy it. But the other thing is this this language that you bring in, right? Saying the right thing at the right times, and that that also is very special because, you know, you in a way you you shared these 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 little anecdotes with me. So, for example, again, if we go back to say um, the first time we did the Giro Sardinia together, you know, I know you remember we were coming into a big bunch sprint. And, and that's always a very, very tense moment, right? And then over the radio comes a very calm Alan Davis, you know, looking good, Jay. You're looking good here. You can win this. You can win this. And, and you know, you just, that was maybe a kilometre and a half from the finish, right? Where we're at that moment, what am I? I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling stressed. And then I just get this very calming, you know, voice in my ear. Yeah. And the interesting thing, of course, is that then, you know, having worked with you over these years that these mantras now I've adopted myself, right? So whether you're in my ear or not, you know, whenever I'm a kilometer and a half from the finish, like this year in the Tour of Brussels, right? Here was I in a race with guys half my age, less than half my age. It was a fall in. And with three kilometers to go, I'm in the front group of 10 guys, right? Looking around me and I'm thinking, what's going through my head? I can win this. I can win this. That was your words. So that for me is also very important. Does your coach actually bring to you these mantras, these words of self-belief that can come to you in those moments when your coach is not there beside you? And that for me is very important, that language. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. You're, you're, you're like my little, uh, what do you call it? My little guardian, uh, Alan Davis, sitting on my shoulder, whispering in my ear. <laughs> no, I'll just follow it up a bit on there, Jay, to answer your question more before. I mean, it's, mm. I mean, uh, being a good coach is not also, you have to get to know the indiv individual off the bike as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's what we do speak about. You know, we're both family men. Um, we've both got our hobbies. You've got your career. You know, there is a time and a place for, for every conversation and, and it needs to be had. You know, a good coach needs to have those, those conversations and, and you have a family, you're a father, you're a, you're a husband, you know. So it all, you have, we have to find that happy balance into every individual and then we make sure we stay there and we, we're getting the cycling goals, you're getting your father goals, you're getting your husband goals, yeah. I'm getting my coaching goals. They're all getting ticked as we go along on this journey. Very important as well. Yep. And that, that is very important, Alan. And I think, you know, the other thing, again, with the champion's mindset is there's something that I've, I've really taken for you, Alan, is that with what you've said, right, I, I have, you know, I have a, a job, I, I have a career, I have a family. So I can't be, you know, in peak form all the time, right? And, and that's something you always say to me, like, is, you know, what's happening in your life in the next 12 months? And then let's, let's, let's set appropriate goals on the bike that will allow you to live your life and not put any of those different areas you talked about under massive stress, right? So that for me is also, I think, super important in this coaching relationship that, that your coach understands you as a human being, as a person, because too many coaches that I see, they write a training plan. You know, let's say they, 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 they're working with a, with a mid thirties, early forties man or woman, they send them a, a training plan of 20 hours a week um, with, you know, whatever it might be that often just simply doesn't fit with a job or with children or whatever it might be. So the coach is actually allowing that person to set a goal for themselves. Let's just say racing the UCI Grand Fondo World Championships. And at my age group, that's a 160 kilometer race. Well, guess what? If you want to be in the pointy end of that race, 160 kilometer race, you have to be training 15 to 20 hours a week for the pretty much year leading into it, right? For how many people is that practical? You know, and yet some coaches allow exactly. them to set those kind of goals themselves. Whereas Alan, like this past year, 
you know, I was very busy with work and different things. Well, I'm talking about 2019 here before COVID. So what did we do? We said, well, what's a realistic goal given the time that you have available? The European Time Trial Championships go really fast for like 35 minutes. And, and that's what we did. And, and I was able to achieve, you know, world level performances with less than 10 hours training a week. So, yeah, that, that, that aspect of understanding the whole person and then adjusting yeah. the goals and the training of that is super important. Super important. Yeah. But can I, can I bring that to the point that you, Alan, understood that uh, and made your transition from being just a coach to a mentor coach? Because the mentor part, that's the part Jamie is talking about, that you are understanding very well and you started to understand it because you asked a lot of questions in that direction. It's, can I say? Yeah. And, and another thing would be, would that have been something that when you ended your career, would you, would you have see that as a talent at that moment, at the end of your career? I kind of, towards the end of my career, I, you know, I've always been, in mentoring I think has been natural, um, especially, you know, a couple of younger eyes could probably back, you, back me up here that I've read, ridden with or worked with. So it was kind of, but definitely got developed as I made that transition into coaching and, you know, in, and coaching Jamie in particular. Um, yeah, definitely those qualities got, those got developed, that, that uh, talent got developed and uh, a lot more. And, and I find it very natural to be, oh, you know, a mentor or give, give advice or be a natural leader, I suppose. I mean, I had a good chat with Matthew Heyman about it. He's another very good example, good example of a, great natural leader that just comes raw, you know, um, and you can see that straight away um, in, in Maddie and, and then people that have that. I, for both, I have another question of, uh, we several times talk about the word self in, in winner's mindset, uh, Jamie. So one point we didn't talk about yet was fortitude. How on, um, how are you, um, pushing or inspiring uh, Jamie in, in, in the aspect of fortitude, you know, making sure that it all continues. Can you, can you go a little yeah. deeper in, in that uh, point? Yeah. And I think here, what you're talking about, Alan, uh, like, like when you say fortitude, like for me, it's, you know, Alan, you know, I've had my ups and downs, right. I've had crashes, um, you know, well, a very good example this year, the Giro Sardinia, uh, which I think it was the, the second or third stage where I had great legs. Um, you know, it was a stage that, that I could have won, if not certainly been on the podium, and I screwed up. You know, I made a tactical mistake. I was not concentrating at a certain point. The brake went away, um, and I was feeling pretty shit about that, right? But, yeah, yeah, so maybe you can just talk about what you do in those situations where I am disappointed, I have been knocked down, literally, physically crashed, whatever, and how you help me to get my spirits back up again. Yeah, I suppose that comes back to, I suppose, Paul, just lever again of, of my experience of being in that situation, that scenario, many a times. The reality is, in, especially in the cycling game, you lose more than you win, no matter who you are, even Peter Sagan, you know, so... Um, you get to learn uh, by every experience like that. You get to learn on how how to take a positive out of that, you know that that uh, that bad luck, so to speak, and and to turn that into a positive and make it a good learning curve. I mean, that's kind of what I try to do as now and with my coaching, and also with you, as you know, Jamie, is take those advantages to you know look, they're all there's tomorrow. In two days' time, you've got another sprint stage, or you know. Or, just turn it into a way where you, it goes into a positive end and it's forgotten about straight away or pretty much straight away. And then we're starting to concentrate more on, on changing the future, you know, which yeah. is a, which a, which is a stage around the corner or an event around the corner. Or I think that's a big important part of being a, a coach as well is mm. being, being able to uh, keep the, the athlete fresh in terms of uh, resetting you know, yeah. and, and resetting yeah. new goals as well, because it does get stale after a while. You know, this this whole thing, and 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 to be able to reset and keep it fresh and keep new goals, mm. or even uh, adjust other goals that were in place. You know, to keep it positive in 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 terms of the way the way we're going. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And on that one, I, I think definitely that that's super important. And and yeah, if I think back to that Giro Sardinia stage, I mean, that that really is what what you said to me. And and then actually it was interesting because then I went and had a look at the race data, you know, on, on my Strava. And then remember in that stage, there was a really steep final ramp, like 400 meter ramp. And um, yeah. I went and actually had a look at the data of the guys who won the stage, who did get in the breakaway. And actually for that day, I think I had the second or third highest power, you know, watts per yeah. kilo on that last ramp. So you know, and I spoke about that with you and you said, yeah, yeah, if you were there, you would have won that race, you know? And so, so we turned that, that negative actually into a positive because I thought, you know what, you know, I could have, you know, if I was there and there will be another chance. I think that's super. And the other thing, Alan, you talk about there is this whole thing of um, the resilience for me is about mental resilience as well as the physical, because it does Mm. become tiring. It does become exhaustion. You know, when you have those big goals, you know, world level goals, particularly on the road. And one of the things that you really taught me was just to have downtime, you know, that, that actually, once you get to a certain level physiologically of fitness, it doesn't all disappear in two weeks. If you have two weeks just to relax and eat and, you know, do all the fun stuff that you should be doing in life. Um, but in a way, I, I didn't have that belief in myself and you gave me that confidence, you know, that, that you can have this time off, time out, you know, and the, all the stuff that you did to me about introducing swimming and walking and just spending time with my kids. But you framed that to me as training. It's part of your training plan. And that for me was also really amazing because, I, you know, so many guys I know who are really the alpha male, alpha lady who really want to win they they they're really prone to overtraining and not just physical overtraining but mentally getting tired and and that for me is also part of fortitude not just the physical fortitude but the mental fortitude to keep that freshness coming and you do that brilliantly for me anyway that's exactly. that's what you're talking about. Yeah. It, it, you know constantly you guys, you guys are talking about uh self belief engagement enjoyment you know uh the what I call leadership language. That's what you're doing a lot of times, uh, Alan. And to, to in, reinforce or enforce his uh, fortitude. So, you know, it's, it's a winner's mentality. And to me, this is a great, great, great example of how mm. a connection of both of you guys can lead to the results you guys have where you have the results of the racing, but also, like I said, the visible enjoyment you even have here talking about it, which yeah, is, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, I'll, 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 put, I'll put some images in from our race on Sunday here, but uh, I mean, you could see, I mean, Alan's joy, you know, at the end of that, you know, you could see him on the edge of the seat. His eyes were, you know, he was stroking his moustache. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then, you know, in that, in that last <laughs> kilometre, when I launched my attack and then the guy comes back and then I go again and, you know, okay, I, I was the one who put my hands up at the end of the race, but, you could see the joy on Alan's face there that, that all this hard work we've been doing together sort of came together. And honestly, it wasn't me crossing the finish line. We were crossing the finish line because that result was, was a 100% joint effort. And, and that's also something, again, I, I think people underestimate, certainly in the professional world, but I think in the amateur world as well. Whenever you see a winner, that winner does not win alone. You know, that winner wins because of the team around them, or the people who are supporting them. Um, so for me, you know, all those jerseys on the wall behind me, you know, they, they belong to Alan and I, they're not my jerseys. That's for sure. I'm not sure it's a bit blurry on the screen, Jay, but it's two in front now, right? You and another guy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's two in front and the next ride is 500 meters behind or 300 meters. So they, they are closing in a bit now. They were 500. As you can see, they've come onto the race circuit now. This, the finish line is on the is on the Imola race circuit with the Formula One's race. So uh, we're on the circuit now. So not far to go. Keep it going, mate. Keep it going. Great job. Keep it going, mate. Keep it going. That's good. That's good. Not far to go now. Couple of minutes of effort, mate. Good job. You're actually hit the front. 
Keep it going, Joe. Keep it going, mate. So it's basically a race in two here. So we've got Jamie Anderson and Bortolasso, the local Italian rider. So it's two, two in front. And the third rider is Alessandro Balan at 448 metres behind. So keep it going, mate. You've got not far to go now. I'm not sure how far. It's a bit blurry, but uh, it's you and this other guy for the win, mate. Great job. Sensational. Here he goes. He's putting it into him now. So we have the live commentary now. I'm not sure if you can hear it, guys. But... Come on, mate. We're in front. Come on. 15 minutes. 15 metres in between us, sorry. Good job. Good job, mate. He's won it. He's won it. Good job, mate. I can't hear you. Oh, man. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Woo. Ah. You beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're a good thing. I couldn't do it without you, bro. Thank you so much. Great job, mate. Great ah. job. Oh. Awesome. Woo. Top shelf, brother. Top shelf. Well done. Thanks, bro. Awesome. Good job. Uh, Wonderful. No, that's uh, it was uh, going back to um, Sunday. It was yeah, lucky November was just around the corner because I had something to to deal with my stress. Uh, Alan, Alan's <laughs> talking well, about I, November. I, you know, growing your moustache in November. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I seen. Uh, well, as a coach, you know, I was watching my you know my client, my mate. Uh, I was seeing it all unfold. And I'm thinking, you know, there's seven. Let, let's let's be honest. There's seventeen hundred competitors in this race. <laughs> so and I'm um, I'm seeing this unfold and. And I'm thinking, you know, James, James is in a good spot here without getting yeah. too excited, just just being sticking yeah. to the plan. And then, yeah, it was all those raw emotions were inside and, and it was yeah. it was fun. It was yeah. good fun. And then hey, but- my wife was there. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Check, check this out. He's, that he's- was fantastic. That was, but look, on, uh, listen, you know, we had all the joy and the fun as well. But look, a very, very important point that I will make about that race on Sunday, right? Because I had some funny guys, you know, on, on social media saying, oh, yes, but your normalized power wasn't that, you know, this and that, you know. Um, I won that race on Sunday with, a, with, a, with you know, for the cycling nerds out there, with a normalized power of around 270 watts, okay? Now, you say, that's not very high. It's not high. But Philippe won the world championships this year with a normalized power of 275 on the same circuit, right? So what do we go back to talk about? Remember when I started working with Alan in 2016, I said, I'll never beat these guys. But I think what we saw on Sunday was I won that race, not with my legs, but I won it with two heads, (laughs) my head, the thinking head and Alan Davis's head, because we used the power that we needed at the moments that we needed them only. And the rest of the time, I was hiding behind guys, drafting, saving my energy. So this is also a very important message for those of you out there who think that the job of a coach is just to get you to be a Watts machine, you know, producing power. No, 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 no. You know, your legs are the last resort in a race. And that's why all this stuff we're talking about with the winner's mindset, the tactical nous, that that right word in the ear at the right time, you know, I would guarantee you that in that race on Sunday, There were a hundred guys in that race with a higher power output than I had, right? But I was the one who won the race, right? Alan, I don't know if you want to say a few words about that, but that for me absolutely epitomizes 
why Alan is an amazing coach because I was not the strongest guy in that race on the weekend. Yeah, I mean, you know, cycling is a dynamic sport and tactics become a huge part of it, even in the virtual world, mm. as you you just said, Jay, you know, um, you know, there's a time to use your energy and your glycogen stores and we can go into a lot of scientific detail about it, but there's a time to use your energy and the time to recover. Yeah. And, and if you don't combine those both aspects, you won't win. Yeah. So it's, yeah, you have to know, you know, I suppose doing it for a long time myself, but I think it comes naturally as well. Um, tactics, I think, is is a natural thing as well. They're just naturally, you, you, you I think, coming from the track, you know, coming mm. from a track mm. background, as you know, Jay, you know, you learn you learn a lot of yeah. tactics being uh, being a tr- on the track as a young rider, and it sticks with you through through life. Definitely through my professional career and now in coaching, um, you know, giving you advice, and you know, you're pretty good at it yourself naturally as well, Jay. But knowing how to use your energy wisely, and at the end of the day, you know, the winner is the one who puts his hands up, not the one with, you know, the most neutralized power numbers or the most power peak power numbers. You know, it's there's, there's a winner at the end of the bike race, and uh, the tactics come into play on who that is every time. Yeah, you're you're right. I mean. The winner is the one who crosses the, the line first on a legal way. And later in life, it won't say he won with so many watts or he... Exactly. That doesn't matter. This is a new sport. You know, the online world is, is new. And that was also, I think, a revelation for Alan and I, because, you know, we, we had thought that this is basically a competition of, you know, power, right? That it's all about what's, what's, what's. But what we yeah. start to understand is that just like in the real world, right, Alan and I, we study all of the races on the World Series calendar every year. And we say, we do not do that one, that one, and that one. Why? Because that one is a flat race. It's going to be the big power guys. That race has four and a half thousand altitude meters within 120 kilometers with climbs of an hour or 45 minutes. You're not going to win that, Jamie. You know, so we, we, we look at all of the races on around the world and we say, that's the one we can win. That's the one we can get on the podium and we don't do the other ones. The revelation for us, I think, doing this amazing Pedal Italy series over the last weeks is the variety of the courses. So what we also understood, because I also did the Mortirolo, which was a real climbing course, and I finished you know, on the podium there, but it, it wasn't certainly ideal for me last week. Great training, but it wasn't ideal. The course on Sunday, which was on the Imola World Championship circuit, was made for me punchy, short climbs, very high power output efforts, you know, at the start on the climb, over six, seven watts per kilogram, right? When I did launch that attack over the top, that's what I can do. So that was a revelation for us. And I think for anyone listening, that's also super important, you know, a Zwift race or a Ruby race, they're not all the same, you know, choose the races that, that fit your profile. Um, And that, that, that for me has been a revelation. The other thing that has been very important is that Alan and I, we always do it right. Right now, what does that mean? On Sunday, I put my, I weighed myself in the morning. I put my correct weight into the system. I calibrated my power meter correctly, right? And for us, that's also important. It's not just about winning based on your capabilities. It's about winning in the right way. And I think on Sunday, that also for me was something, not that I was just proud of, but something that I was also happy about in terms of the sport itself. Because if I could win on Sunday, doing it right, you know, not putting in a, ridiculously low body weight or anything like that, then that tells me that most of those other folks there who were in the top 10 were also doing it right. And that, that gave me a very good feeling. So I think, Alan, Alan I don't know, what, what, what comes next for us, man? I don't know. I mean, we, we, where do we go with this? Because we've had now some awesome experiences like Sunday with virtual racing. What, what have you got in store for me, mate? I don't know. <laughs> oh, mate, we're, we're coming into winter, well into winter now, I suppose, in Europe. So the cycle cross season's... Ooh, heavy, yeah. heavy mm-hmm. in, in play, mate. So there could be some options there for you, but we'll have a discussion about that. But I'd like to back what you, that's exactly right what you're saying, Jay. You know, as a competing masters athlete or, or amateur athlete, you know, you have a, you have this uh, ability to choose your races, to choose yep. your goals. Yep. You get to know your body, get to know your strength, train through your strengths and pick goals and races that coincide with those those two ingredients yeah. um a professional cyclist they have to go sprinters have to go over mountains and be on the group and they don't have a choice they don't have that ability to choose 
you guys do. So that's very important. We spoke about it before on, you know, with Michael Rogers and on, on previous TCL episodes. But yeah, be smart about it. Have a have a plan in place. Train to your strengths. Pick the pick the events that will coincide with your strengths and ability, and go for it. Now, very important point, Jack. Very important point. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Alan. Thank you. Wonderful. Good, Bernard. I guess we should bring this to a close. It's been a great yes. conversation. Yeah, uh, I thought it was very interesting, and it's a pleasure to get the connection between you guys uh, to know that a little more. And it's 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 an example for a lot of stuff. So, hey, folks, I think uh, and I hope you like this conversation. At least for me, it was a very much. Uh, discovering uh, lots of new things about how people can connect to achieve goals. So if you like us, please give us a thumbs up and uh, we will be uh, back in the next days or so with other interviews. And for now, keep it safe and have a great day. Bye.